Welcome to Wasteland. It's a world both familiar and strange. A world as varied and memorable, we hope, as the real Disney lands and stories that inspired it. The land Adam is exploring today is called Ventureland. It's what we call a quest zone, where you talk to characters, learn about quests, buy tools and supplies. Here, for example, Adam is talking to Wasteland's version of Smee, learning what Mickey has to do to continue to make progress through the game, and also about an optional quest that he can do or not do later in the game. In Ventureland, in addition to Smee, you may recognize some other characters from the film Peter Pan, but a little changed, and some theme park locations, also a little different than you may remember, including the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse and the Tiki Room. Some of the Disney inspirations can be hard to spot. I mean, Wasteland is really full of forgotten stuff. But identifying it all is part of the fun. One thing is for sure, though. No one will have any trouble identifying our hero, Mickey Mouse. For decades, he's been one of the biggest movie stars in the world, a television celebrity, uh, constant presence at theme parks, friend and teacher to our kids. But for all the success he's achieved, it's always felt to me, at least, that he hasn't quite become the video game hero he deserves to be. If my team and I have our way, that is about to change. To take Mickey to new heights of video game success, we knew we couldn't just look back at Disney's history or Mickey's past triumphs. We had to allow Mickey to do things no other game character could do and offer players something they'd never seen before. Our key innovation lies in our core game mechanic, drawing and erasing using Mickey's new ability to control the essence of his cartoon being, paint and paint thinner. Using paint and thinner the way Adam is here, players can erase characters, objects, walls, plants, even the ground. Or they can restore everything to beautiful painted glory. In other words, players can dynamically change the game world to save it. But how each player decides to change the world makes a difference. Or, as I like to put it, play style matters. How you change your world, how you interact with other characters, that changes how the world looks, of course, but also how characters treat you, what they tell you, what they don't tell you, and how each character's story ends. Do you solve problems by using the power of thinner to erase and remove obstacles? Or do you solve problems with the power of paint, the creative power? Do you use paint or cleverness to turn enemies into friends, or do you simply defeat them? Do you take time and use precious resources to solve everyone's individual problems? Or do you uh, focus exclusively on saving Wasteland from the enemies that would destroy it? These are just a few of the options available to players, each with its own rewards and its own costs. At the end of the day, we want each player to feel like he or she has crafted a unique experience based on the choices made and the consequences of those choices. I believe the play style matters concept is the hallmark of modern game design. And the combination of Mickey Mouse and Nintendo means we can take that idea to a larger audience than ever before. Now that you've had a, a taste of a quest zone, let's check out another kind of map out. You see, there are three location types in Disney Epic Mickey, a game that combines the best of adventure, platform, and role-playing games. There are places called action zones, where you'll engage in missions that can affect the way your story unfolds and change the lives of the characters you interact with. You'll have to visit the Disney Interactive Studios booth or the Nintendo booth to learn more about those, about Mickey's uh, missions. There's, there's plenty more to see than we're showing you here. For now, let's watch as Adam jumps into a movie screen to enter our third location type. What you're about to see is called a travel zone. And it takes Mickey from one part of the wasteland to another. These are side-scrolling adventures, I bet you could tell that, uh, directly inspired by beloved Disney cartoons and the classic console platforming games we all know and love. Here's one inspired by Steamboat Willie, the cartoon that introduced Mickey to the world. There are many more cartoons that appear in the actual game. In closing, let me just say how excited I am that Disney has allowed me to create a game featuring Mickey Mouse. It's the, the company's crown jewel. Not many people get the opportunity to work with a star of this magnitude, to be a part of an 80-year history of joy and laughter. With Disney Epic Mickey, we honor Disney's rich creative heritage, to be sure. But to be true to that heritage, 
we had to honor another aspect of Disney's history. Walt himself once said, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. Innovation has been part of Disney's culture and Nintendo's from the start. To take Mickey to the top of the video game world, we had to find a balance of heritage and innovation worthy of Disney and Nintendo. I think we've done a pretty darn good job, but I invite you to see uh, for yourself on the show floor. Uh, there, are, there are team members waiting there to, to show you more of the game. So show up, see how play style matters, experience paint and thinner for the very first time with our hero, Mickey Mouse. Thanks to everyone at Disney and Nintendo who made Disney Epic Mickey possible, and uh, enjoy the show. Thanks very much.